There is one thing in Swedish that a lot of people struggle with and I don't see why because it's not difficult, it's not hard to grasp, even a child can do it in five minutes. So I guess all the sources out there are just plain bad. I have no idea, but let's solve this today. Together! <laughs> Hey Aliopa, hi everyone and welcome back to another video from Say It In Swedish. I'm your host, Joakim, and today we're going to talk about... <laughs> we're going to talk about reflexive possessive pronouns in the third person. Yeah, that sounds a bit... Uh, it sounds difficult, but it's not. What we are going to talk about are words like his, hers, its, and theirs. And in Swedish, these words are translated into uh, hans, hennes, des, not dets. Ugh, a lot of people, a lot of Swedes say, they say dets, but it's des. And then <laughs> we have uh, deras. And if these people are doing something to what they possess, their own things, then we use other words, or one word, sin, which has to be declined or conjugated or, or changed uh, to the gender, to fit the gender and the numeral of the, the noun. So uh, the word is sin, sit, or sin, not just like. Uh, my and yours in Swedish, min, mit, mina, and din, dit, dina. So we have sin, sit, sina. And we use this word when the sub subject, like the those people do something to their own things. I think it's a bit easier if I show you an example. So if I talk about his shoes, I like his shoes. Jag gillar hans skor then I like his shoes, right? Or her shoes, or or their shoes, and whatever. Jag gillar hans skor, his shoes. But if he likes his shoes, then it's just han gillar sina skor. This word is now in plural, so sina, with a A at the end, sina skor. He likes his shoes, his own shoes. So if you can put his own and her own and so on. If you can put that in there in the translation to English, then you would know that you have to use sin, sit or sina. And let's take another example. For instance, jag målar hennes hus. I'm painting her house. I'm painting her house. Jag. Jag målar hennes hus. But hon målar sitt hus. She's painting her house. So like, you can see that like she's painting her own house, like, she and her, they are, uh, like a, it's a group of words, like an entity. She is doing something with her own house, so she, that's one entity, but I'm doing something to her house. I am an entity and the house, her house is one entity. You see what I mean here? It's not very hard to, to grasp. She's doing something to her own things. She is painting her own house and I'm painting her house. I'm painting her house, not my own house, her house. So that's that's it really. Sin is used with N words in Swedish. That sounds a bit weird in English, but that's the modern contemporary way that we describe the or name the Swedish genders of nouns. So we have N words and T words, and sin is used with N words, and sit is used with T words, and sina is used with uh, plural, for instance. All right, guys, this was a short video describing this phenomenon and that other languages might not have, but we have it in Swedish. And yeah, it's not hard. Some, someone is doing something to their own things. 
then you use this special reflexive pronoun that is, is pointing back to the subjects, to the person that is doing the thing, to uh, their own thing. <laughs> and if not, you and someone else is doing something to somebody else's something, then you use the normal or regular pronouns. That's it. If you want to learn more about possessive, bleh, if you want to learn more about Swedish possessive pronouns, you can click here, the card here, and you will get my free audio lesson. And um, on that side, you will find a lot of audio lessons and vocabulary lists for learning Swedish. And if you want to talk to me, you can do that on Discord and social media. Links are in the description down below. And if you like what I do on this channel, please consider becoming a patron for only one dollar. That would help me out a bunch. All right, see you in the next lesson. Hey,